Joining us this morning is the co-founder and president of Dimer, Elliot Kreidenberg. Elliot, thanks for your time today. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, you want to walk us through how this works and is it being used in this particular case? Yeah, so we've kind of seen, situation, seen situations like this with uh, SARS and MERS and Ebola, norovirus, and even influenza. And this really starts with the airlines and then it ripples out through the hospitality and to the other industries. Um, the situation that we have here today is particularly scary because these germs can survive for 28 days. And when the CDC uh, decided to start doing these enhanced passenger screenings on inbound flights from China, we, we realized that if there's a positive test, something that sets off these alarms, there's no recourse for killing the germs that are left on the plane. And when these germs can survive for 28 days, uh, we really need a way to disinfect the airplane because when people are traveling, they're going all over the place. What's the efficacy? Uh, how long does it take and how much does it cost? Okay, so we're using UVC lights just like they use in hospitals. Our background is in healthcare. So we really became familiar with this technology in hospitals. Uh, and we re really just reapplied it to the airline space. Uh, our, our unit fits like a puzzle piece in the airplane cabin and we're able to blast all the high touch surfaces with strong doses of UVC light. Um, there, are, there are known dosages required to achieve 99.9%, 99.99% reductions of viruses, which is particularly what we're focused on, on airplanes. Um, and we know that those doses are very easily achievable with not only the Germ Falcon, but also our other machines. Elliot, I want to go back to this to this point you just made, because it's pretty shocking. I bet a lot of people don't realize this, this idea that there's no real infrastructure for in infection prevention efforts on planes. Uh, given that fact, what are the conversations you're having with airlines right now? Are some of these potential customers buying your machines and already starting to deploy them? So right now we're deploying our machines as a service uh, for free because we want to be part of this emergency response effort. Uh, this. This is also kind of a two-pronged pilot that we're doing because this is also a good opportunity for us to prove to the airlines that this can be a long-term solution. Um, so for even this influenza flu season that we've come to accept every year, um, this is a really good way to intervene and kind of disrupt the way that these diseases spread by commercial airplane because the, the germs can survive, influenza survives a few days on an airplane, on surfaces outside the body. and. Uh, Coronavirus survives 28 days, so it's really important that we are disinfecting these planes and making sure that we can do our best to contain the way these diseases are spreading. Elliot, uh, it looks like uh, part of the argument that you're making for the cost effectiveness of this is the cost per seat. I believe you've got a, a nine cents on it. I can uh, see it in a time like this. It's easier to make the argument, absolutely, scan the plane using uh, UV to, to get rid of these germs. But how about just the normal course of travel, even when it's not flu season? Is that part of your calculation? on cost per seat that every single time that the plane changes over, one of these machines would have to scan it? So in a perfect world, yeah, that's, that's how we would like to see this done. But I think if we're doing it on a once per day basis, that really is a much better situation for passengers. Sort of the way that restaurants are required to maintain a certain level of hygiene, and that's become an expectation for restaurant patrons. Um, we wanna change the perception so that that is uh, the perception when you board an airplane that there's a certain level of hygiene that's expected. And I'm assuming this gets done on the overnight maintenance, right? You can't do this between cycles. So it depends how long the, the plane is on the ground. We think that in the overnight routines is a perfect place to insert it. But if somebody were to use the motion sickness bag that the airlines are so kind to provide, um, it may be worth running this up and down the aisle real quick because we don't know if that's motion sickness or if it's norovirus. All right, Elliot, uh, thank you. Uh, interesting angle uh, as uh, industries of all kinds try to address this problem.